Call to order the October 25th, 2021 special session. It is now 7.02 p.m. The first item on the agenda is patron input. Ms. Normand. Thank you, good evening. We have um, no patron input right now for this evening. We did have 43 submissions this afternoon. You have a packet in front of you with all of those submissions, none of them related to the agenda items for this evening's special session. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I never, got, I never got one of those packets, so. Sorry, we moved you around. Yeah, so you probably did the first couple times we had you sitting there <laughs> before we moved them around today. Sorry about that. Okay, the next item on the agenda is a discussion regarding declaring the necessity of acquiring certain real property for an elementary school in the Beaver Creek area and authorizing the superintendent to negotiate the purchase of the property and or institute eminent domain proceedings in accordance with ORS chapter 35 to acquire the property. Mr. Wes Rogers. Good evening, school board. Um, good to be with you tonight. Um, Wes Rogers, director of capital projects for the school district. And tonight we have a, um, a board resolution in front of you under action items, but it essentially is a, um, an action item to authorize the superintendent um, to uh, pursue and negotiate the purchase of, of property in the Thimble Creek concept plan area, which is um, near the um, intersections of Loader Road and Beaver Creek Road. Um, we've been looking at property and been talking about property in that area for many, many months. Um, and um, this piece of property is one tax lot one, um, pro one piece of property, and it's um, owned by a family in the area uh, of a family uh, real estate corporation. And um, we've been uh, beginning property negotiations with them and um, in earnest and to acquire the property, and this authorizes the superintendent to take the necessary steps to, to uh, acquire the property. It's, it's an ideal elementary school site because as we've shared with you in the past, the Thimble Creek concept plan has over a thousand housing units in its um, development plan. And um, it's no um, we don't know exactly how many elementary students there would be in this area, but it would be a significant number of elementary students. And that combined with other uh, development that's going to be on that side of the school district, it's, uh, it's definitely um, projected that we'll have the need for additional elementary school capacity in the next five to 10 years. And that this is an ideal site and would provide a very significant amount of walking path areas as well for students. So rather than transporting a lot of elementary school students on school buses, which we do to some of our schools now, this one would be located very close to that development and allow us to have kids walking to school and going to school in their local neighborhood, which is something that we really, um, really wanna see happen in the future as we, um, as the uh, school district grows and um, uh, answer any other questions that you might have about acquiring the property. This was part of the 2018 bond um, themes or promises was that we would acquire property for future growth and capacity challenges that we knew that were coming. And so this is part of that. Um, it's in combination with um, other property negotiations in the area where we're trying to um, configure a middle school site with, an, uh, with our existing elementary school site. And then um, this piece of property would replace that elementary school site that is being reconfigured into a middle school site. So, and both our elementary and middle school enrollments uh, um, over the next five to 10 years are projected to grow. And um, uh, we still have plenty ample capacity at the high school. So this is the area where we need um, additional capacity in the future. Be glad to answer any questions for you. Director Farmer. Thank you so much for being here tonight, Mr. Rogers. Um, so you mentioned that this was something we had agreed to do when we passed the bond in 2018. Um, can you just briefly touch on um, how many other properties have we looked at or have we looked extensively yeah, or is this? That's a great question. Thanks. Um, this is, um, 
um, a step in a long line of steps that we've had. We've been studying property since 2016 at different places throughout the district to um, identify um, in advance areas that would be um, very suitable for elementary facilities going forward. And as you know, as you drive around Oregon City or even Oregon City School District, which includes the city of Oregon City and then its outlying areas, there, um, there aren't a lot of flat or appropriate parcels of land that are near utilities. And a lot, um, we've been, we've been uh, studying um, pieces of property that are next to the city limits or within the city limits extensively over the last five years. I can't believe it's been five years, but it has. And um, uh, there just isn't a lot of level land out there that's 10 to 20 acres, depending on if you're looking for an elementary school site or a middle school site. And so um, this is, uh, I think uh, we're at the end of that journey because I believe this site is, is ideally situated to the development that we're talking about. And it also would put um, an elementary school site very close to our Oregon City High School site on Beaver Creek Road. And then um, we are very confident we'll have successful negotiations to the south of this site um, near uh, Beaver Creek Road and south, or Beaver Creek Road and Old Acres Lane. Um, we are looking at some property to add to our elementary school site to make a middle school site. So I often call it the triangle. We'll have a middle school and elementary school on one side of Beaver Creek Road and then not very far from our existing Oregon City High School. So for a family who might be moving into that area of the district, you would be pretty close to all three of the schools that your children would, would attend um, in the district and which we think is something we've not had in a long time because uh, the high school has sort of been an outlier by itself out on Beaver Creek Road. So it makes, it makes a lot of sense from several different um, vantage points. And um, uh, yes, but it's been a, been a long journey and something we've talked about in the, in the bond was um, preparing the district for future growth, which we know is going to happen. Um, Oregon City is, a, is one of those areas that's receiving a lot of development interest at the current time. So. And while not in the Oregon City School District, Clackamas Community College is right down That's the road, too, too as go. far as further education yeah. opportunities. Yeah. And as we've talked, you know, having neighborhood schools, schools, you know, where students can walk to school. Mm -hmm. And this one falls in it. Thank you. Yeah. No, those are excellent points. Thank you. Mr. Rogers, it, it's also that this resolution, as I understand it, is, is the first step in the process. Correct. Correct. Mm -hmm. So in order to finalize, there are many steps upon which the district will have oversight and the board will have oversight. Yes, this so is the initial step necessary. Yes, that is correct. To begin. Okay. Yeah, there's, this is just the beginning of our um, negotiations process. And there's, um, you know, we have clear um, um, steps to take as we go forward. This is just the beginning step of just um, stating our intent to want to purchase the property. And then um, as we go through this negotiations process, there's other steps that we, uh, we can or might take, depending on what the board would like to do in the future with acquiring the property. Um, and also, our, you know, our goal is always to have friendly negotiations and, um, and uh, with property owners and uh, make sure that they're receiving fair market value and um, for their properties and that um, the district treats them with respect as well as just honoring their um, presence in the community and so forth. So we look forward to doing that with um, these um, property owners as well as we go forward. Um, and then we'll, we'll see how that takes us from there. But yeah, it is a, it is a drawn out process for, for the school district to acquire property. Um, Again, this was not property that was offered for sale, but it is property that we've approached the, whole, the uh, property owners and um, are beginning that negotiation process. Thank you. So Any when you questions? say this is a first step, this is the initial step, or does this give you the authorization for the imminent domain as well? I mean, it does give, give the, the, if friendly negotiations are not possible because mm -hmm. of, um, and the only thing I could foresee would be that we don't agree on price of the property. And again, um, the uh, district is always very interested in paying fair, fair market value for property. And um, as stewards of the, the um, taxpayers' dollars, we always want to make sure that we are paying fair market value to, to people for their property. 
Um, however, if, if we can agree on a, on a fair market value based price, then there is a process that the um, Oregon Revised Statutes have set out that the district has to follow to acquire the property. And it guarantees that um, the court decides then, eventually if we did go the entire um, process, the court would decide what is the fair market value of the property, not the district, not the, not the, the property owners, but the court would decide then and then the district would have to purchase the, the property at that point. So it, it, it uh, protects the, the um, property owner and it protects the district in a way as well to say that it's going to be based upon fair market value and the court would decide then what that is um, precisely. So we'd each have our, our time to, to make our case for that. But I'm, I'm hopeful that we can um, get to a price that where we'd have a willing buyer and a willing seller and we can shake hands at, um, across the table and say, yeah, we both, we both can uh, agree to that price and then move forward. It is undeveloped property right now. It is just a pasture land. I know I say just, it is pasture land. I'm from Montana, so I have a lot of respect for pasture land. And um, uh, so it is pasture land currently. No, no uh, buildings are on it, no uh, homes, or it's, very, it's uh, unimproved land. And um, uh, another reason why we think it makes a good, uh, a good uh, a good candidate for a school because um, we uh, we 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 can continue to allow it to be used for pasture land until we have a need to develop it. So you said the property was owned by a family. How many years has the family owned that property? I don't know the exact year that they acquired it, but they have owned it for decades. So okay. They're long, very much long-term owners. So property. it's been in their family for a while, then. Yes, probably. it has. Yes, okay. For sure. And then, how long after acquisition would it be until you start developing the property? Um, that all depends, of course, upon, you know, steps as a district finally, you know, develops it and moves forward with a capital improvement plan for um, the future. But um, I would say that we would probably be looking at some t somewhere around five years, five to seven years. Okay. Um, a little bit of it depends on how soon we come out of COVID and the impact that it's had on our enrollment and so forth. But pre-COVID, we, we were already at capacity at the elementary level at preferred capacity, I call it, because it, it's, we had more elementary students in our schools than we would prefer to have, but they're, they were made for that. But again, um, you have to buy property. One thing that we do benefit from is that um, previous administrations back in the 70s actually bought property that we're very fortunate to have right now. And, um, and uh, we wanna do the same for, um, in the future for the school district as well, because we, you know, planning and, and uh, purchasing property that's strategically located mm -hmm. is better to do it when you're 10 or more years out, at least, than um, doing it when you need it in, in one or two years. So um, we definitely will have a need for more, for more elementary capacity in, in the next five to 10 years, for sure. Any further discussion? Director Stroh. So the, the bond measure that was passed that we're looking to spend the money to buy the property, would we have to do another bond measure to do the construction of the um, elementary school and the junior high that we were wanting to do? Yes, that would, that would be true. And during our bond measure, the 2018 bond measure, we talked about, you know, early on we did want to replace both middle schools and we were very clear about that and that was our goal. However, when we received our initial pricing estimates, um, we would have barely been able to build both middle schools, replace both middle schools, and we would have not been able to do any other safety and security upgrades to any of our other schools. And safety and security was one of our hallmarks of the 2018 bond measure. And I think if you've gone around to our schools and um, even the high school, we've done some, some safety and security upgrades at the elementary schools, significant safety and security upgrades. We wouldn't have been able to do those. And so at that point we said we had to make a forced choice and, and which middle school needed the replacing the worst or the most, and that was Gardner Middle School because it was the oldest of our schools in, the, in that um, situation. And so we replaced Gardner Middle School and they did a really significant renovation of, of uh, Tumwater or Ogden Middle School. And so um, we still did significant work at the middle school level, but we couldn't quite replace um, Tumwata like we did Gardner. And, um, and uh, that used up all of our resources from the, from the 2018 bond. So going forward, 
um, if we want to build a new schools on and acquire additional properties um, beyond what we're looking at here tonight, then we would have to pass another bond measure for sure. And again, we have one of the lowest, I think we have one of the lowest and the lowest, I think we're number three as far as um, bonded indebtedness, bonded indebtedness property tax rates in the, in the greater Portland area. And so when you look um, at our rate, which is around a dollar twenty, dollar twelve. I think it's around a dollar twelve. Um, I haven't checked this year's property taxes, but um, most districts are at two dollars or higher. So. No, I, I th I've shared with you before in the executive sessions how I feel, and mm -hmm. I fully support building a new school for the kids. I really do, and I, I love the fact that we do have some people out there that are agreeing to sell their properties to us to build some of this other sites that we've looked at, but I still have a really hard time with imminent domain. And I think that's the biggest thing that we, that, that, that's holding me back, unfortunately, is because in the world that we live in of government overreach, I mm -hmm. think that that's a big thing right now. And knowing that the family that owns the property they've had for generations, I think that that also kind of stings a little bit as well. So I, I have a really hard time with that. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, I totally respect that, um, and it's not something I know that either the previous board or this board takes lightly and mm -hmm. only would look at as a last resort. Um, but yeah, I agree with you. I much would rather rather have um, um, negotiations in a more friendly, um, non-adversarial um, situation so mm -hmm. that we can both feel good about the process. And, and that has guided our, our um, sort of our um, journey since 2016 is to try to look for properties that had the least impact on property owners. Because again, um, uh, we've we've not we've not used um, imminent, imminent domain as a tool, and um, I don't think the district really wants to either. Um, but at the same time, this this um, particular site has everything that we would want in an elementary school site. Um, and I hope, hopefully, we can we can work that deal out before we have to go to the legal route. And so, to be clear, this resolution authorizes the use of eminent domain, right. but it's not mandating it is not, that that I mean, actually yeah. occur. Correct. And we'll, as we have done in the past, we always keep the board um, apprised of what we're doing on the property um, on the property front um, for the district, and um, would definitely. Um, not be doing things that are not in um, alignment with the board's wishes. And, and would so it be would it be in a public session or in an executive session that we'd be discussing? Executive those? sessions guide those discussions okay. because they are so um, sensitive about okay. pricing and, and the negotiations process. Um, but at the same time, we can give updates, general updates in public sessions about okay. how we're doing with the process and so forth. And as we've done with the other pieces of property that we are working that we were looking at in the same general area before we had given public um, updates to the board about how those negotiations were going generally and um, and whether we you know whether we thought that there was going to be um, you know um, soon to be announced um, agreements or not and mm -hmm. so um, we do give general updates but specific updates happen in executive session okay and the board does um, will would have to make a, um, a, um, a resolution of approval of any property purchase um, in a public session. So okay. the final approval always comes from the board okay. in a public session. Any further questions? Director Conchola. So the property that we're looking at is pasture land, correct? We're not correct. There's no outbuildings on it. No outbuildings whatsoever. There is some fencing, of course, because it's pasture land. Um, the only other um, significant feature of the property is that um, there um, there is some uh, land that is considered to be drainage for a creek. However, it's never it's it's not um, it's not maintained as a creek. It's been turned into pasture land, which is common in this area of Oregon City might have been back in the day 30, 40, 50 years ago before it was cleared, it could have had a, um, some wetlands on it, but currently it does not. And then um, there it is in very one very small section of the property, there is a transmission line for natural gas. And uh, we, we have very strict rules about how close, how far away we're going to be from that, from that, um, 
from that utility line. And do we know the, how far the current residents would be away from the property line? Um, currently, I believe that's, um, if I remember the map correctly, it's about 80 to 100 feet from this, from this, we could give up about 80 feet um, to the to the property and not develop it on the on the property line with the home with the residents and the residents I think is somewhere in the neighborhood of 100 to 150 feet further into the property so it's a good 250 feet or so almost a football field away and the property surrounding this individual's property it it's changing zoning and yeah and the, as the, we the entire area has been um, around and includes the school we are on the, the section of the Tim Thimble Creek concept plan that's campus industrial. So um, uh, this piece is the last piece of industrial property um, on the east side of the, of the concept plan. And then after, after this piece of property, there's, gonna, there's scheduled or planned to be a road and then residential property. And so the, the residents, one of the co-owners of the property lives to the north and that north zoning is campus industrial. It, but I don't believe that that person is interested in selling that piece of property. And we're not interested in, in acquiring that property either. It's the property to the south of it, which is pasture land that's adjacent to that other piece. So at some point, all this pasture land that's currently there is going to be developed. Yeah. And unfortunately, I would probably say not only developed, but there's going to be a lot more traffic in the whole, the whole uh, uh, field and, and the uh, the uh, context of the of the area is going to change once you build a, over a thousand housing units, campus industrial, some mixed use along Beaver Creek Road. Everybody knows that that's going to dramatically change that area of the of the city. But um, I think that person would like to, and it's a nice. Their residence is a very nice piece of property, and, and it's big enough to where the house sits sort of in the central part of it, so they can protect themselves somewhat from the development. But yeah, and there'll be a lot more noise, more traffic for sure. Thank you. The nice thing about schools, they're not used in the summer and they're, they're not used all day long and they, we don't typically have a lot of heavy trucks coming and going from an elementary school. It's mostly kids playing outside and, um, um, and then uh, having some green spaces for, for people to come onto the school grounds and play and, and enjoy the property. So it, it, I look forward to that. But yeah, we're, we're trying to stay as far to the south as possible so we can um, not uh, impact the, the neighboring properties. Any further questions or discussion? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Rogers. Thank you. Look forward to any other questions you might have and we'll keep you posted. Thank you. Okay, moving on to the action items. The first is 2122-228, approved resolution of the Board of Directors of OCSD number 62, declaring the necessity of acquiring certain real property for an elementary school in the Beaver Creek area and authorizing the superintendent to negotiate the purchase of the property and or institute eminent domain proceedings in accordance with ORS chapter 35 to acquire the property. Do I hear a motion? I'll make a motion that we approve um, action item A, 2122-22A. All motion to second that. Any discussion? Well, I, I would just like to say that it, it's my hope um, if this resolution is approved that um, eminent domain is not ultimately necessary. Um, I, I do think that um, what I know of the search and how the district has worked to find a space for a very well needed elementary school uh, has been immense and extensive. And I know that everybody uh, who worked on that project has really tried to avoid positioning themselves in an eminent domain posture. And so I, I hope that um, if this were to be approved, it would be a last resort. And I feel confident based on Mr. Rogers' presentation that it, it would be um, a last resort if 
this were approved an approved mechanism to acquire property. Any other discussion? I'd just like Director to say Hayes. the same thing. Um, I still have a really hard time with the eminent domain part of it. Um, I just can't fathom it. And it's not a reflection against you, Wes. You've done a phenomenal job. And listening to everything that you've put into looking for property, I just want you to know that. So. Do we need to amend this to say that there's a... I don't believe we need to. Okay. The, the, the question from Director Conchola was, do we need to amend it to add today's date? But I, I believe that if the resolution passes it's, okay. today, it's automatically effective on the date passed unless we make a prospective effective date. Is that the understanding of all of the directors of the board, that it would be effective today if passed? That is the understanding. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for bringing that up, Director. Okay, hearing no further discussion, Ms. Beck, could you pull the board, please? Director Stroh? Aye. Director Hayes? Nay. Director Canchola? Aye. Director Farmer? Aye. Director Philpott? Aye. Motion passed. Uh, resolution 2122-228 carries. Moving on to the next action item, 2122-101, approve added duty appointments for 2021-22. Mr. Ogden, did you wish to address the board regarding that action item? Certainly. Chair Philpott, these are the um, regularly scheduled um, added duty assignments for the fall. Are these um, assignments that are already approved in terms of budget? And what we're being asked to do today is approve the individuals in those particular positions? That is correct. These are all, these duties all fall within the collective bargaining agreement as listed added duty assignments in, in varied sites and levels. I just have one question about the, um, the school nursing um, positions. It was my understanding that we, as a district, had hired school nurses. And so I was uh, wondering why there was a need to provide a stipend if we already had the position filled or are these in areas where an individual we might not have that position filled and we're asking another in individual to assist in that regard that'd be correct if it's an added duty that means it's duties beyond their contract time yeah so we could be um, utilizing the added duty to um, subsidize that position to do the additional assignments necessary i see thank you any other questions Okay, regarding 2122-101, do I hear a motion? I will make a motion that we approve 2122-101. And do I hear a second? I'll second. Thank you. Any, dis any discussion? It's less discussion than just how much joy it brought me when I look through this list of existing employees, many of them are names that have been so committed for so long to serving our students and to see them being, you know, awarded additional duty appointments. I look at some of our greatest, our greatest pieces who ha are just still giving more. And it was really, I just had to comment on how many of amazing staff are stepping up and doing more. Thank you, I agree. It was quite an impressive list, wasn't it? Um, I, I do have another question. There seems to be certain duties that look like they're the same duty, but they may carry a different stipend. Some of them might be a 0.5 and some of them might be a 1. Um, 
Could you explain why that happens? Certainly. They okay. are 1.0 duties, but they may be split. Um, similar to what uh, Director Farmer said that, you know, maybe they're splitting a duty in the fall because of a family commitment or something like that. So they've, they've divided that duty into a 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Um, some of them also, they may just be a half a stipend based on the timing of when that stipend's being issued. Maybe they're using that half in the fall and a half in the spring um, as far as where that allocation came from. Okay. And some of the, the, the stipends are noted as fall or winter, but there doesn't appear to be anything here on the spring. Should we expect that we might see those, for example, fall after school jazz band and drumline? Is that something that's only in the fall? The, um, <laughs> there are components that you will see. You'll also see an added duty come November for winter, okay. and then you'll see something in February for spring. Yep. I see, okay. So the I guess, fall is the most extensive one because many of these are carried out throughout the school year. Okay, and that's why it's entitled 21-22, the whole year? Okay. That is correct, yep. Okay. Right. Why is there a 0.8 stipend on some of these? You, uh, they're not splitting it with somebody, are they? No, not necessarily, but that may be what they were able to fund for that particular stipend. And there's there's a double stipend in there that two. So it, is that an advisory at Gardner? Is that a misprint or do they do an extra? For the advisory coordinator? Yeah. Yeah, that would there can be a double stipend. So we have a category D stipend with it which is an activity stipend that actually can be um, issued multiple times because it's on a it's on a specific duration. So usually those are eight week stipends with a and they're in the collective bargaining agreement. So they're an eight week stipend with either 24 or 32 hours of dedicated time toward that stipend. So you could see something like that issued, excuse me, a couple times in a school year because they're doing this eight week segment in the fall and maybe they're doing it again in the winter. So we issue it in advance. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Ms. Beck, could you pull the board, please? Director Cantola? Aye. Director Stroh? Aye. Director Hayes? Aye. Director Farmer? Aye. Director Philpot? Aye. Motion passed. Okay. By unanimous vote, the motion 2122-101 Approved du added duty appointments for 2021-22 shall pass. Okay. There are no items left on the agenda. This meeting shall be adjourned.